Welcome back to our learning course. In this lesson, we will look at how animals can learn something that we can call the value of stimuli. This lesson is a continuation of the ones on conditional reinforcement and on learning actions in instrumental conditioning. You should have those lessons in mind before studying this one. So what does it mean to learn values? In psychology, we usually talk about associative strength instead of a value. And this is what we have been doing up to now. But today we'll talk about values instead of associative strength. As we will see, there are actually two ways of seeing the same thing. We actually introduced the concept of value in our lesson on learning actions, when we saw how to use the Roscoe and Wagner model in instrumental conditioning. Let's go over it again. In instrumental conditioning, we can imagine that the animal is trying to understand what actions are most valuable to perform. An action that right away leads to food, for example, has positive value, and in fact we can say that its value is exactly the value of the food, because that's what you get from doing the action. Similarly, in the case of Parovian conditioning, we can say that the value of the CS is practically the same as the value of the US. If the US is food, then a CS that predicts that the food will appear will also be valuable in the sense of giving the animal information that something of actual value is about to happen. In short, we can say that things that don't actually have value, like pressing a lever or hearing a bell, can have some sort of virtual value because they contain information about what is going to happen. This is very close to the idea of conditioned reinforcement. In our lesson on conditional reinforcement, we saw that animals learn to like stimuli that predict valuable stimuli. We are now saying the same thing. Saying that the stimulus becomes a conditional reinforcement is the same thing as saying that the animal learns to give a value to the stimulus. Let's now see how we can learn the value of things. We already know how to learn the value of actions, as we saw in the lessons on learning actions. There, we use the Roscoe Wagner model, and it turns out we can also use it here. Let's call WCS the value of the CS. At the beginning of a Pavlovian conditioning experiment, the value is zero, because as we know, the animal considers the CS meaningless. However, the animal will soon start to notice that the CS is followed by the US, which is a valuable stimulus. We can then say that there is an error, our usual error from the Roscoe Wagner model, which is the difference in value between the US and the CS. If lambda is the value of the US and WCS is the value of the CS, this is the difference, which, as you see, looks exactly like our usual error. So our equation for the change in value of the CS is the same as the equation for the change of associative strength in the Risk and Wagner model. This is why I said earlier that associative strength and value actually refer to the same thing. The reason why I'm calling it value now is because I think it gives a better idea of what I think learning is trying to accomplish. That is, learning is about figuring out the value of things, either the value of actions in instrumental conditioning or the value of stimuli in Pavlovian conditioning. The last thing I want to mention is that the value of a US can also be learned. For example, we saw in the lesson on conditional reinforcement that dogs don't innately value meat, but they learn that it is a valuable stimulus by experience. So what Roscoe Wagner called lambda can actually be split into two parts. One that we can call U, and it is the unconditioned part of the value, and one that we have called W, and that is the learned part of the value of the US. Altogether, they make up the value lambda. We will see why this is important in the lesson on learning sequences of actions. Let's conclude this lesson by showing how an animal learns the value of a stimulus in instrumental and Pavlovian conditioning according to the model that we have just presented. Let's do Pavlovian conditioning first, because this is what we have been talking about so far. The orange line in this graph is a learning curve for the value of the CS in a Pavlovian conditioning experiment. This is the simplest experiment. We are just letting the animal experience the CS before the US, as usual. We see that the value of the CS increases exactly like the associative strength in the Roscoe and Wagner model, as I mentioned in the previous slide. That is, learning is fast initially, when the error is large, and then gradually slows down as we approach the value of lambda, which in this example is 1. The blue curve comes from a similar experiment, but now we're talking about instrumental conditioning. So you can imagine that the stimulus is a lever that the animal, like a rat, can press to get food. 
The lever also becomes a valuable stimulus during learning as it predicts the opportunity to get food. The increase in the value of the lever is more irregular, however, compared to the orange curve that represents the increase in CS value in a Pavlovian conditioning experiment. You may remember from our lesson, Learning Actions, that this irregular growth also happens for the value of the action itself. In fact, the reason is the same. The value of the lever can increase only if the animal actually presses the lever and gets food because only then the food is delivered and the animal can learn that the lever has value. So this increases slower in the beginning when pressing the lever is rare, and then once the animal starts to press the lever more regularly, then the increase becomes more rapid and it actually catches up eventually with the Pavlovian conditioning curve. So in this short lesson, we reinterpreted the associated strength of stimuli as their value or more precisely as the animal's understanding of their value. Right now, this looks just like a different way to say the same thing, but in the next lesson, we will see how the concept of learned value or condition reinforcement, as it is also called, as we know, is important in understanding how animals learn complex sequences of actions. This lesson is over. Happy learning to everyone.